Another normal day, she thought. Alicia was always sticking by the schedule. She chose to be the perfect student and the perfect daughter. She was the perfect student, all good grades on all her report cards. As for the perfect daughter, Aisha couldn't be worse. She tried to talk to her mother, but always ended up raving, and was more comfortable away from her parents' judgmental eyes. Aisha finally got up after debating with her inner self for two minutes of whether she should get up, and did her morning routine. She went downstairs to see her mother cooking breakfast while talking on the phone. As usual, she wasn't noticed by her mother, but her little sister Ayana no- noticed her. Ayana ran into Aisha's arms and whispered, I think Dad is an alien. Aisha smiled. And why is Dad an alien? Aisha, you're supposed to whisper. Aisha put her little sister down, patting her head. Okay, I gotta go now. Ayana pouted her lips with her hands on her hips and tapped her foot, trying to look intimidating. Aisha ruffled Ayana's hair, showing that her little look didn't work, and gave her a kiss on the cheek. Walking into the kitchen, her mother was on the phone, arguing what sounded like an employee. Did I mention both of her mo- both her mother and her father were business owners? So they were very busy. Aisha stuck into the kitchen, trying not to let her mother know she was there. Sure enough, her mother didn't even know she was awake, because her mother kept yelling upstairs for her to get up. Grabbing an apple and a chocolate bar, Aisha gave her mother a, cus- a kiss on the chink and ran out the door. As she rode her bike to school, she thought of how she was going to get out of Brittany's blacklist. Brittany was pretty much the mean girl of the school, who hated Aisha's guts. She pulled her bike onto the bike rack. She knew what was to come. As she walked into the school, she came face to face with the stuff of nightmares. No, not Slender Man, but the one and only Brittany Martinez and her two goons. Oh, hello, Mr. Little Miss Perfect, Brittany spat rudely. You don't know how to play English, Aisha said, trying to get past her. All of a sudden, the bell rung, signaling that the class was going to start soon. Saved by the bell, Aisha thought, pushing past the girl group to go to her math class. As she sat, the final bell rang, showing that you had to be in class. I was almost late, she sa- she thought angrily. The door swung open to show the most popular boy in class, when Aisha's eyes looked like a goldfish. Hi, Nick, said one of his many fangirls. What's up? Nick said as he sat next to Aisha, making her scoot away from him, tempting her to get up and jump out the window just to be away from him. Before she could try anything, the teacher rushed through the door with a bunch of papers. Okay, class. Nick rolled his eyes and glanced at Aisha. He wrote a note and pushed it to her. Aisha picked it up and smirked at him, and gave it to one of his other fangirls. After that, the teacher finally got her desk situated and neat and stood up. Okay. She went to the board and started writing such a huge math problem that people were already start writing their wills. But it didn't bother Aisha. In her head, she had already found the answer. When the teacher was done writing the problem in her horrible chirography, Aisha rose her hand and said the answer qu- quickly. The rest of the math class went on like this until the lunch bell rang. Aisha leaned against the wall, waiting for the crowd of students to die down. All of a sudden, Nick slammed his hand next to her face, smirking. Who does he think he is? Aisha thought angrily. You know I'm popular, right? Nick said, acting as if it was a big deal. Aisha rolled her eyes, went under his arm, and slammed her hand on it, making him lose his support and fall on the wall. No, I don't care, right? Aisha said, with a scowl clearly visible on her face. Walking out of the classroom, Aisha went to the cafeteria and sat on a bench close to the window, away from all the giggling girls, stupid jocks, mean emos, and especially Brittany. Grabbing her apple out of her book bag, she ate it as a dove and a raven flew to the window and tapped on the glass. She tapped back. The rest of the day was horrible. Most of the girls had found out what she did to Nick and were scheming to do something whack. As Aisha was going to get her bike at the end of the school day, the girl group blocked her path in the school hallway. We heard what you did to Nick, Aisha, one said. Yeah, and we're not happy about it, another shouted. Brittany was in front of the group, crossing her arms. And we're going to teach you a lesson. Holding up some scissors, Brittany lunged for Aisha. Aisha jumped out of the way and ran with a cornucopia of adrenaline. Jumping on her bike, she rode into the woods, dodging tree roots, trees, and rocks. The girl group was close on her tail and on their bikes, but as she looked behind her, she didn't see the rock in front of her and crashed, 
Lying on the ground, Aisha groaned, getting up only to see her bike broken and bent. Soon the girls were there and fighting with Aisha, trying to cut her hair and her. Aisha was ravaged badly and lost a little bit of her hair, but she sent the girls back with scars, so it wasn't a total loss. As she stood up, she wiped some blood off her lip and frowned at her mangled bike and decided that she would leave it lying against the tree to be retrieved later. As she was laying it down, she heard whimpering deeper in the forest. She decided whether she should investigate or run away. She wasn't a coward, so she went farther into the woods toward the whimpers. As she followed the sound, she saw scratch marks on the trees and immediately thought it was a bad idea. As she walked to the whimpers, she found the source of the sound. It was a huge white wolf about two-thirds the size of her. Aisha cautiously walked towards the creature and kneeled down next to it. On its neck was a red collar. On the collar was a silver skull charm, which frayed her to the max. She poked the wolf, who let out a quiet, whimpering sound. Poor wolf. I could take it home and take care of it. At this point, the wolf was watching her, wondering who she was and what she would do to him. Aisha looked at the collar closely, looking for a name or address, only to be greeted by one word. Pluto. So is your name Pluto? The wolf barked in response. Aisha looked out the forest. She kept getting the feeling that she and Pluto were being watched. The birds didn't sing, and the wind was silent as it blew. I'm going to pick you up and take you home with me, so don't bite me. Got it? Aisha said to the unusual white wolf. Aisha picked up the canine and walked to her house slowly, making sure not to drop it. Arriving at her house, she was relieved to find that her mother and father were not there. Using her house, she, house key, she unlocked the door and rushed inside. With her back against the door, she realized that Pluto was licking, her cu- licking the cuts on her arm and shook him off. Stop that! She set him down on the sofa. She made her way upstairs to clean herself up and to get bandages for her newfound friend. She went to her mother's room to look for the first aid kit and found a love poem from her father to her mother. With the grimace, she pushed it away and got the first aid kit and went. She hurried downstairs to see Pluto chewing on her sister's cat pillow. No, stop, Pluto! Aisha roared at him, making him shrink back on the sofa. Aisha stomped up to him and gave him an itty-bitty whack on the ear. Pluto Pluto blinked and then doubled over in fake pain as he lied on his side. He opened one eye, expecting her to apologize to him. Aisha squatted down next to him and laughed. Get up, Pluto. I promise I won't hurt you again. Pluto sat up and held his paw out as if to say, promise. Aisha looked at Pluto with surprise. I mean, who wouldn't after a wolf holds out a paw to shake your hand? Aisha smiled at him and shook hands. You're pretty smart, you know that? Aisha passed up his injuries and went into the kitchen to get a special goodie for him. She brought back some bacon that she was hiding to eat for herself. As he was eating the bacon, all of a sudden, both of them heard the door get unlocked and the voices of Aisha's family. Aisha slammed a pillow on Pluto's body and acted like she was watching television. Trying to adjust the pillow to where no one could see him and he could still breathe was a challenge. Her mother burst through the door while holding her briefcase in both hands. Her father and sister followed soon after. Okay, goodbye, Mr. Squirrel, Ayana yelled outside while her father shut the door. Help, I'm suffocating. Aisha, a voice said under the pillow. What was that, Aisha? Her father asked her, looking confused. Ayana climbed on the counter and grabbed a berry from the fruit bowl and threw it at Aisha, potentially trying to annoy her and get her to chase Ayana around the house. Aisha smiled innocently at her family and picked up the the pillow and Pluto at the same time. As she walked upstairs holding the pillow, her mother and father looked at her confused out of their minds. Um, I got homework. I need to study. You know, school is hard and challenging, and I gotta go. Aisha ran to her room, leaving two parents speechless. As she set Pluto down, she whispered loudly, You can talk? Surprisingly, Pluto replied, Yes, I can. That was when Aisha fainted, falling hard on the floor. Yep. That's what they all say, Pluto said, looking down at Aisha sleepily. Thank you for listening to the chapter one of Aisha, of the adventures of Aisha and Pluto. If you like it, leave a like. And by if you like it, I mean mommy, please give me a like because you're the only person that's going to listen to this.